What's going on everybody? Crypto Kid here coming at you again with another video. In this one, we are going to be looking at our Ethereum price prediction post merge, which is coming in somewhere from September 13th to September 15th. So this is truly right around the corner. It's honestly pretty mind boggling that it's finally here because I think for a lot of us, um, we thought that it actually may never come because it just kept getting pushed back further and further and further. But yes, it is finally here and that's just crazy to say. So. Regardless, guys, um, there's a lot of chatter right now about, oh my god, Ethereum price is about to explode. Oh my god, Ethereum price is about to drop in in incredibly. Um, and I kind of just wanted to clear up the rumors and kind of just um, set this narrative for you guys of what actually is, will likely go down. Um, just keep in mind, this is not financial advice. Um, obviously, no one can tell the future, and we're just going to use whatever context clues we have um, to go ahead and best accurately predict uh, what's coming. So I kind of just have some points listed right here. Um, that we're going to be bouncing off of for this video um, and then a couple interesting articles or calculations for you guys so can you get a lot of quality info from this video i encourage you guys to stick around to the end without further ado let's get into it uh, so number one a big portion of staked eth is from large validators who are in it for the yield not the price gains um, so we got to remember guys for a lot of us um, that went ahead and invested in ethereum um, over the past few months to a year uh, with the intention of staking it or locking it up until Ethereum 2 rolled around. Um, when we made that decision, we obviously expected, you know, this is crypto, there's gonna be some massive price swings, but we are in this long term, and I think that's the key. Um, if you're willing to lock up your Ethereum for, you know, an in indefinite period of time, so let's say one to two years, um, a lot of us probably thought, uh, and then suddenly the price drops over that time time frame. You know, we kind of expected that. It's a volatile market. We kind of understood uh, that that was a risk of happening. Um, and now that it has, I don't think that people are going to be necessarily freaking out or anything because this 8% is meant to just kind of act as rocket fuel for when this price truly explodes. You know, people aren't just trying to make 8% in Ethereum APY with the intention of selling after a year for an 8% gain. Uh, because, like I said, the volatility is just so incredible that that 8% would just be negligible if the price were to go down. People are expecting the price to explode. The 8% is just added incentive. I don't imagine that a whole lot of these people are going to be selling at a loss because me personally, I'm not considering selling any of my Ethereum once it gets unlocked, um, especially not at a loss. You know, I've held on this long. I'm definitely not going to go ahead um, and sell now that the fruits of my labor are finally coming to fruition, you know, and I have that access um, to my Ethereum assets. And so moving on, guys, uh, to point number two. Ethereum e staking rewards should double to about 8%. Um, APY migration from proof of work to, P to proof of stake will eliminate miners and therefore payments to miners will be replaced by smaller block rewards to staking validators. So in this article here, we can see 6% is the new 12%. Um, initially, ba the, the reason for this heading is that initially people thought that rewards were going to be a whole lot higher. Uh, but according to Into the Block, the yearly Ethereum staking reward is likely to fall somewhere between 6 to 8% if the merge, the merge goes live in September 2022. Um, ultimately, growth in the amount of staked ETH is good for Ethereum's network security despite the lower rewards because it makes it more difficult and expensive to mount a 51% attack. Uh, so honestly, 6 to 8%, I don't really think that's going to deter any investors. Uh, obviously, anything higher, I think, uh, almost wouldn't be as good because then we're starting to see some inflation. And what you'll see later in the video is that Ethereum does have the potential to become a deflationary asset, um, which at the end of the day is actually going to bode better for investors um, than if there were to be a higher inflation rate with more probability of people kind of dumping on the price every single day. So the other part here is that about 33% of staked ETH is already live uh, on platforms like Lido or Coinbase, and these are already tradable. So if the price were going to go down, you know, people already have the access to go ahead and sell right now if they truly wanted to. Um, so I think what we're kind of seeing now um, is we're able to kind of get a jump start on people's reaction to Ethereum. Uh, and I don't think that we're going to see this massive price reaction um, to Ethereum going live because, you know, we've already kind of sort of seen uh, this reaction. So a lot of people say, is this priced in? Is this priced in? Um, and I'm going to go ahead and say yes, to some degree it is. Obviously, with such massive news, there is going to be some sort of jump. You know, I mean, obviously, attention is going to come onto the space. Uh, but to me, with more eyes, more positivity, really, because this is a positive movement, um, if anything, it's going to be a rise uh, from this, from the news. Uh, you know, if it goes mainstream, if anything, it's going to be a rise. So I don't know why people would freak out about that. Um, higher staking yield, you know, I honestly do think that a lot of ETH buyers, including institutional investors that are seeking these yields, are going to come into Ethereum. 
um, especially since a migration to proof of stake is going to remove some of the risk uh, risk associated um, with proof of work. So you know this could be this could make it a little bit easier for institutions to come into Ethereum. Obviously, it makes it look better than Bitcoin from an investment uh, position because you know Ethereum closely follows Bitcoin, if not outperforms it year over year. And now you have that eight percent guaranteed. Um, passive income there. So the other part is that Ethereum has made over, maintained over 70% market share of dApps. So even with all the competitors, Ethereum has been the number one layer one, not even close. Doesn't doesn't matter if it's Solana, Avalanche, whatever. Nothing compares to Ethereum. And without dramatic increase, uh, with dramatic increased scalability, the Ethereum ecosystem should thrive even more. So for those of you that don't know, with proof of work, you're kind of limited on how much you can scale the network. Um, with proof of stake, it's going to be just that little bit easier, uh, or else a lot easier, uh, to go ahead and scale the network and implement some improvements. So the other part I want to show you guys is Ethereum in relation to Bitcoin in terms of its price. So we can go ahead to the one year mark and just see that we are approaching a yearly high. And if we want to just go to max, um, we're obviously not totally close to all time highs, which at one point was 0.14. Uh, but we are sure as hell a lot higher than we've been in years. And I think that we have obviously potential to explode to possibly 10% of a Bitcoin, which is just obviously super impressive, um, especially looking at the one year, we're up 13%. Uh, but I'd actually argue that we're up more than 13%. If we want to look at Ethereum supply to one year ago, 117.43 million, all the way up to 120.4 million, whereas Bitcoin supply went from 18.81 million to 19.14 million. Uh, go over to percent calculator. Basically, ETH had an inflation rate of 2.53%, whereas Bitcoin had um, just over 1.75%. So obviously, we can go ahead and add the difference between those percentages. Also, onto Ethereum. What does that tell us? Ethereum is gaining a lot on Bitcoin. Now, the final part that we're going to go ahead and look at um, for this video is the Ethereum burn rate. Um, if we saw with EIP-1559, uh, we basically introduced the burn rate after the London hard fork. Um, so let's just go ahead and see what that entails. So Ethereum's current burn rate includes the latest stats highlighting nearly 1,825 ETH have burned in the last 24 hours. Uh, 13,026 ETH have been unlocked as rewards in the past 24 hours. So obviously the ratio is still off a little bit, um, but there is hope for the future, especially following proof of stake, um, especially following the integration of proof of stake. So on August 6th, the day after Ethereum's hard fork, the burn rate was 3.10 ETH a minute, translating to roughly $8,500 in ETH at its previous pricing. Many analysts perceive this burn rate as inflated due to a transaction backlog from the upgrade. However, as we've seen in the month after the hard fork, the burn rate remains high. So now I'll pose the question, is Ethereum deflationary? Basically, for Ethereum to be deflationary, over 2 ETH needs to be burned each block. This is because 2 ETH is minted per block mined. However, this will not be a regular occurrence. Um, essentially, most blocks are burned under 1.5 ETH. Um, but actually, for the first time ever, and this is actually an open an NFT on OpenSea right now, um, in block number 12965263, the Ethereum supply actually decreased. So pretty rather exciting. Um, but regardless, after the merge, um, we should be seeing uh, inflation on the lower rate and net inflation rate of 1.26 to 2.66% is at least a little bit more manageable for Ethereum in comparison to Bitcoin's 1.17% inflation rate. Um, but some are saying once Ethereum switches over to staking via proof of stake, its inflation rate could actually hit negative 1.05%, making it deflationary, which would just be incredible for the price of Ethereum. So all in all, guys, I think the story kind of writes itself here. So what can we take away from this video? Number one, there's probably going to be a massive move in the Ethereum price following the merge. Um, but this is just going to be a little short term impulse, either up or down. This is not going to have a massive impact on the price long term, in my opinion. I think that long term, after all this research, we can kind of put together that this merge is going to be extremely lucrative for a lot of investors. And I think that the price is going to react really well over the long term, especially if we are able to become a deflationary asset. So I think that should be very exciting for Ethereum investors. I'm definitely loading up my bags. I encourage you guys to do the same. Remember, this is not financial advice. Always go ahead and do your own research, but like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.